What's up? It's Matt McWilliams, and today I am so excited to share a special interview with my friend Stu McLaren. Now, today we are talking all about membership sites, how to create recurring and consistent revenue in your business, whether it's as an affiliate or maybe even having affiliates promote your membership site. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. I could not be more excited for any interview that I've ever done. Stu is one of my like favorite people online, right? He's genuine. He's full of energy. Uh, this interview was so much fun. Now, since we're talking about membership sites today, one of the best ways to learn how to create a membership site is to be a member of another membership site, right? And right now is the perfect time to join our membership site. It's called Affiliate Insider Monthly. Now, Affiliate Insider Monthly, or AIM as we call it, basically helps you to navigate the ever-changing world of affiliate marketing. You know, keeping up with the times, knowing what's working right now, it can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be hard. So start unlocking the secrets of, of people who are just like you, who are increasing their commissions by two times, three times, sometimes even like 10xing their commissions without becoming slaves to their business by joining Affiliate Insider Monthly, where you'll be able to join other entrepreneurs just like yourself and learn the latest strategies and tactics to help you succeed with affiliate marketing. No matter what your niche is, no matter what your list size is, no matter you know what your experience level is, you're going to learn how to do this inside of Affiliate Insider Monthly. And there has literally never been a better time to join than right now. So as of this recording, you can get a trial membership in AIM for only a buck a month for your first two months. Like one dollar, like just one little dollar gets you access to the premier affiliate marketing membership in the whole world. How cool is that, right? Just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash aim trial. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash aim trial to claim your trial membership. Get two months and get full access to everything inside. And now for my interview with Stu McLaren. Well, Stu, welcome, my friend. Dude, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, well, I want to spend a moment, I want to talk about you first uh, before we get into all the juicy business stuff that we're going to talk about today and all the you know, coronavirus stuff that's going on. Um, how in the heck did you become the membership guru to like all the, the stars today? <laughs> well, it, it didn't, uh, I didn't wake up with that intention, that's for sure. No. A long Basically, I had a, a consulting business that was doing really well, and um, I love consulting. You know, I still do it today. I reserve one day a month just to work with clients one on one because I do love it. But the problem with that business model is that like there's very little room to grow. Like the only way to grow is to give more time. And back then, I didn't have more time to give, and so I had just gotten married. And Amy and I were looking to start our family, and I was just like, the writing's on the wall. Like if I don't change the way I'm doing business. I'm not going to be a present husband and I'm certainly not going to be a present father. And uh, that needed to change. So I started looking for ways to be able to continue to grow my business, but have more leverage. And a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, he suggested that I start a membership site. And I was like, well, what's a membership site? And so he explained it to me. And he's like, look, he said, basically, Teach others what it is that you're doing for your clients, but instead, inside of a membership site, you got way more leverage. Yeah. And uh, he said you could reach a lot more people, and you're not limited to this, you know, one-on-one -on -one work. And I was like, okay. So I started looking into it, and um, the technology then was not what it is today. Let's just say that. So I was way over my head. I was into like server settings and HD access files, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is craziness. And so I was moaning and groaning to a friend of mine, Tracy, and I was just saying, dude, like all I want to do is I just want to be able to teach. Like I, I don't want to have to mess with all the tech stuff. And he said, well, why don't you create your own solution? And I'm like, dude, Tracy, did you not hear what I just said? Like I'm telling you I'm having trouble with the tech. There's no way I'm going to be able to go and program my own solution. 
Yeah. And he said, well, why don't we team up together? Because I've got a uh, program that's been working f- with me for a couple of years and he's really great. So we did. And that ended up uh, launching Wishlist Member, which ended up becoming the world's number one membership platform for WordPress. And in amongst all of that, I quickly just doubled down my attention on that because it took off. And you know, when I sold my shares in that company a few years ago, we were powering over 70,000 online communities and memberships. And so being behind the scenes of that, I got to see what really works for those membership sites that were growing year over year over year. And so long story short, I, when I sold my share, started uh, sharing with people what it is that those few uh, membership sites were doing. And it's now blossomed into where we are today, where every single year I get to serve thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs, showing them how to launch, grow, and scale highly profitable membership sites. And we have membership sites in our communities from in all kinds of markets, from photography and calligraphy to fitness and finance and music and art and health and dog training and so many more. And so it's just an absolute thrill to be able to watch entrepreneurs take these concepts, use them, and create stability in their business with recurring revenue. Oh, I love that. And I love that you you just kind of addressed one of the biggest questions, which is, will this work in my niche? Uh, so I'm not even going to ask you that question because you just answered it. You know, it's like, yeah, it works in all of these niches. You name a niche. Um, and I also want to point out that you helped us with, with we went through your program, Tribe, um, with the six dots. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah. We went through the program and it helped us launch our membership site. And I, I, I just, I think I sent you an email or a text and I was like, dude, one of the things I had forgotten, like I knew it intellectually, but I'd forgotten in my heart about membership sites was when we were doing our monthly numbers, there was just this, there was like this stripe deposit for, mm-hmm. I don't know, like twelve or $13,000 that we, it took us a minute. We're like, wait a minute. It's not the week of that. We didn't do, what, why did we get $13,000 through Stripe? It was like, oh, our membership site, mm-hmm. you know, like, and we knew it. We just didn't put it in the budget for the fall, you know, forever, like, you know, going forward. And that was like the coolest thing. It was, just, it was like free money, you know? Yes, we have to create the content for it and stuff, but it was like, this is too cool. Well, uh, so that was the moment when I went from being like a fan and a believer in uh, membership sites to like an evangelist. Yeah. Well, you know, what's been uh, fascinating for me in the last uh, few weeks, Matt, as I've become even more passionate about this because I've received messages from some of our tribers, like Casey Hope, for example. So she sent me this beautiful message, um, and she said, "Stu, I'm just I'm so grateful that I have our online membership because she also has a brick and mortar business. So she has an art studio, and she she went on to say in the message, she said, "Stu, we had to make the really tough decision to close the art studio," and she said. I would have been full of fear of like, how am I going to pay my employees? Like, how am I going to pay myself? Or if I could even keep this business alive when all of this is done? She said, but I don't have any of those fears because our online membership not only covers the cost, but allows us to bridge this entire period. And she has a calligraphy membership. Now, what I love about Casey's story is that um, she also recognized that, oh my goodness, there's millions of parents at home right now, not knowing what to do with their kids and have been thrust into becoming, you know, homeschooling teachers. Now, you've been doing it for a while, but for the rest of us, we're like, what do we do? And so, you know, um, so she recognized that. She launched a second membership site. Her and her team, it took them a week to basically put it together, but she recognized, like, parents are looking for activities for their kids to do. So she launched a second membership site that's focused on kids, and it's an art membership. She welcomed 300 new members into that membership, and she's just like off the walls excited. It was her biggest launch yet during this, you know, craziness. Yeah. But I've received messages from her, from Sarah Williams, who owns a brick and mortar retail shop. Same thing. In the last year, she focused heavily on growing her online membership, grew up from 300 members to 2,000 members. So she doesn't have that same worry. Or Mary Claire Fredette, who owns a massage studio, you know, she launched her online membership and she just said, thank the heavens that I had that. Or Tracy, whose husband's a chiropractor, had to close his practice, but because she's got an online membership, it's bridging that gap for them. So Mm -hmm. am I passionate about this? You betcha, because I've been sharing with people like memberships create stability in the best of times, but they show up in a massive way when things get even more challenging. And we're seeing that uh, right here, right now. Yeah, I think it's just amped up your your passion for this because... Uh, I'm a big believer that whatever we do in this time, we're going to come out of this time. Uh, you know, of course, we're going to all come out of it better, you know, and mm-hmm. so it's like right now is the perfect time to do this. And we'll talk later, guys, about 
uh, a way that you can connect with Stu and uh, possibly be like those stories he just shared. I want to go back to you for just a second. You mentioned uh, that when you were going through this, uh, you kind of got into membership world. You had just gotten married. And um, one of the things I want to acknowledge you for, Stu, uh, we're, we're going to go way off memberships here for a moment because I think it's important for people to know who you are. Uh, I remember sitting in, in the audience at LaunchCon, and uh, this was in November of last year. And one of the things that uh, my wife, Tara, said to me that she observed about you from a distance that she thought was pretty cool is just, uh, you're a great husband. Mm. You know, you're, you're a great husband and the way you interact with Amy. And so I'm curious, what's, what's a key, one key that you would give to a spouse, husband or wife, who's either starting or running a business, maybe a membership site, you know, um, to keep the relationship strong while, while also building a, a successful business? Because it's exactly what you've done. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like it's, it's not always easy to be able to, to juggle all the things, right? Like yeah. we, you know, when you're a driven entrepreneur, you want to succeed at the business. And so, you know, there's a lot of energy there. You know, my wife and I, we also have our own nonprofit, our charity. So there's a lot of energy there. And of course, like you put and pour a ton of energy into the kids. So at the end of the day, like where is the energy left for the relationships that matter most? But I think one of the things you got to uh, always be mindful of is like re like investing in the relationship. So, you know, I, it didn't take me long to figure out like there's little things that I can do that go a long way with Amy. Like one of the things is going to almost sound like trivial, but she just loves a cup of tea. Now, so one of my routines is like in the morning, I get up usually with the kids and that's one of the first things I do is I make her a cup of tea and I bring it up to her and it's something so little but it goes so long and so far in that relationship. And so I think along the way, you know, there's, uh, it's, it's identifying like what are those meaningful touches, uh, you know, that we can pour into our partners throughout the day um, that may not, that may seem insignificant to us, but mean a lot to, you know, our partner. Like one of the things that Amy, for me, is she knows that physical activity is like high on my priority list. So, mm-hmm you know, jumping on the Peloton, it may not interest her whatsoever. But for me, it's like, that's a time when I can zone out and, and the world goes away. And, and I can just double down on just like, you know, pushing myself. And I, and I love that time. I love I've always been an active guy. So she knows that. So she, you know, that time is sacred. And, and she helps protect that for me. And I think like, <clears throat> it's a it's um just like anything, it's a partnership of like understanding the other person and understanding how to show up for that other person and communicating often. You know, I give Amy a ton of credit. You know, we, early in our marriage, it was kind of funny. Um, Amy loves, uh, at the end of the day, when we snuggle into bed to, to talk and to chat about things. And, and I'm the opposite. Like as soon as my head hits the pillow mat, like lights are out, you know? And, uh, I remember early in our marriage, um, Amy was talking about uh, something that was, you know, uh, important to her, and I fell asleep. I like I fell asleep, Matt. Like it was the worst. And so she was livid because this was like, you know, super something super mm-hmm. sensitive to her. But the other side of it is like, I honestly I can't help myself. Like as soon as I lay down on a on a bed or my head hits a pillow, like I'm out like really fast. And so we we communicate about this. And I said, so basically now here's how it works. Like when we lay down, if Amy wants to talk about something. I have to say like, okay, babes, we got like, like the two minute countdown is on, you know? So, you know, if this is a deeper conversation, then let's carve out time tomorrow and we'll have it. And what we've learned, you know, in, in our normal routine, I say normal, like outside of like being quarantined, one of the things that Amy and I do on a regular basis is we both take the kids to school and oftentimes we will pick the kids up together. And that time of going to the school yep. is time when we can catch up and we can you know, discuss the things about the day and what needs to happen and all that kind of stuff. And it keeps the communication flowing. So I think more than anything, it's like we've got to you know, give ourselves grace, but we also got to recognize like how we can invest in our partners and make the time to communicate with our partners uh, because I think that goes a long way in a marriage. Hmm. I love that. Um, so here, here's an interesting one that just popped in my head, uh, Stu, because of, of, of the dynamic that you two have in working on your, you know, working on your business together, working on her business together, doing a charity together, raising kids together, of course. Um, what's some, what's a way that she's helped you like personally, just with, uh, maybe with your existing business you know, with, with tribe, what's a way that, uh, she's helped you with that? Well, um, indirectly, she helped me uh, not necessarily 
with the business, but it did absolutely have a huge impact on the business. Because one of the things that uh, when Amy and I got together, you know, I was, I've was i always been a guy that loves to give. Like, I, I always feel like I've had a generous heart. And, and I always wrote checks to different causes and charities that I was, uh, you know, felt were doing great work. And Amy had always traveled. She was always a big traveler. And not to like, you know, typical tourist destinations, but like off the beaten path, so to speak, yeah. to, you know, remote villages and third world countries and stuff like that. And so she would see a lot of need that these communities would have. And she always told me, she said, Stu, you'll never really understand the power of being able to give until you go and see the people that you're giving it to. Mm. And um, I'll never forget. She always, she kept telling me that. And then we finally went on a trip together where the intent and the purpose was to go and, and support this community. And it was way up in the mountains of El Salvador and they didn't speak a word of English. We didn't speak a word of Spanish. There was a lot of acting going on to figure out, you know, how to help. But, um, but we had raised, we had done a fundraiser beforehand and we raised just over $14,000 for them. And we, we went and we stayed with this uh, community at the top of this village. And it was an amazing experience, like really eye opening experience for me. And, um, <clears throat> I remember coming back on the plane with Amy and I, I looked at her and I said, okay, I get it. Like, let's, let's figure this out. And that ultimately led to us launching and growing our nonprofit where now all of our focus is on the schools that we build over in Kenya. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a tickle on the back of my throat. Don't go into any stores right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so all of we focus all of our work over in Kenya. And um and part of that has been when we first built our very first school there. I remember standing uh you know chatting with the chairman of this community. And I was just trying to figure out how much things cost. And so I said to him, I said, well, how much does it cost to fund the full-time salary of a teacher? And he thought for a moment and he said, it's about a hundred dollars a month. And at the time I was thinking like, oh my gosh, like we sell a wishlist member, which was our membership software for $97 for a single site license. And I thought, wow, what if I like allocated the money made from just one more sale to covering the salary of a teacher? Like, imagine the impact that would have on this community. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. What if I make a whole lot more money and I, add, and I dedicate a whole lot more of it to the causes and people that I'm passionate about? Imagine the impact I could have then. And this was an absolutely massive turning point for me from a business standpoint. And I would never have gotten there had it not been for Amy. Because in that moment, I realized the more money I make, the more impact I can have. And I don't know if anybody listening or watching has ever felt guilty about making money, but I certainly did. And I, you know, subconsciously, I would get to a certain level. For me, it was right around $400,000 a year. I'd get to about $400,000 a year. And then I would stop doing the things that I knew would work. Like I'd stop doing the marketing campaigns that would work. I would stop calling the clients that I knew, you know, needed my business. It was like this weird thing. And, I, you know, I trace it all back afterwards that, you know, I grew up with two amazing parents, you know, hardworking blue collar parents. And I was making more than both of them combined. And uh, I never felt like I was working as hard as them. And so it was this weird paradox where I would feel guilty about making money. But that moment over in Kenya, I realized the more money I make, the more impact I can have. And it was a game changer for me. So from that point forward, like I have gone on to make a lot more money. Like I love making money. I don't apologize for it because it's not about the money. It's about what the money makes possible. And that was a massive turning point in my business. I would never have gotten there had it not been for Amy. Yeah, I, I think that's that is uh that's a super powerful lesson. I think uh I know for me, Stuart was thinking that um th- there's a reason why my my podcast is called the affiliate guy, and it's because for about six years I said I didn't want to be the affiliate guy. Mm. Uh because I didn't think I could, you know, make an impact on the world teaching people affiliate marketing and uh, for me, that breakthrough was when I realized that uh, we we had a great night with our kids. We had a peaceful bedtime. They both went to bed knowing they were loved and and protected and safe. And I was walking down the stairs, and I, I know you know Dana Abraham, but we had just helped her a little bit with her launch. Just all we did was coach about ten of her affiliates on you know how to make more sales. I was like, I mean, for me, it was something I can do in my sleep, just like you can teach memberships in your sleep. And I was walking down the stairs, and I was thinking specifically if I did the numbers. We helped, you know, those 
five or six or seven affiliates go from an average of about 10 sales to 40 sales. And I went, wait a minute. That means that there's like 200 families tonight that had an opportunity to experience the same thing we just experienced because I taught them affiliate marketing. Like it was wow. just this weird, like, what? <laughs> you know, and that's when I was like, okay. You know, so there, there's actually an irony to the name, the affiliate guy. I named it that because I resisted it for so long. It's like every time I look at my podcast, it's a reminder, no, that's that's who you are. And that's actually a way to impact the world. What a what an amazing story. And it, it, it exemplifies the ripple effect, right? Like that extended yeah. ripple effect that we all have in the work that we do. And and that's what makes what we do so meaningful. And we got to anchor ourselves to that because that's really what like gets us up, you know, and, uh, and motivated and, and fired up to keep moving forward no matter what is uh, what challenges we're facing. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about these. You mentioned these people earlier, um, all these people who are going through this time and they're, uh, they're survi- not only surviving but thriving. Mm. Um, and they're doing it with membership sites. That was your thing. Like that's how you were able to build. How many schools have you guys built in Kenya now? Uh, so we've done, uh, completed 14 schools. So 14 more than 5,000 plus kids. That's not just building the schools. Like that's building it and funding it for a period of time. I mean, like, yeah, with mostly on your, what's up here, or what previously was just up here about something that seems so inconsequential mm. when you really think about it, it's like memberships, like, you know, um, but that's what I love about it. And yet you've built 14 schools and funded them. And there's, you know, 5,000 plus kids being educated over there that, I mean, the reality is otherwise they wouldn't, you know? Right. Um, so I just, I love that. So what are some of the biggest myths around membership sites that are, that are holding people back from maybe starting one? Well, one <clears throat> certainly is that like, you're going to get caught on this whole, you know, content treadmill and oh my gosh, I'm going to be responsible yeah. for all this content every single month. But here's the reality, like literally because I've worked with tens of thousands of membership sites being behind the scenes. Here's what I can tell you. The number one reason that people cancel from a membership is actually overwhelmed. So they're overwhelmed by the volume of content. Now, this is completely counterintuitive to what we normally think, right? Like we normally think as content creators, like the more content I create, the more value I provide. But that's not the case. Less actually is more as it relates to a membership because it's not about the volume of information. It's about the speed of which people can implement your information and the progress that they make. And so that's certainly a huge myth. And the good news about that is that it means you don't have to create as much content. In fact, back in the day when I was business partners with a dear friend and mentor, Michael Hyatt, his membership site, we would produce more than a year's worth of content in just six days. We would do three two-day video shoots, and during those shoots, we would get anywhere between four to five months worth of content, and then we would schedule it accordingly. So that's a huge myth. You got to create a ton of content. You're always going to be stuck on this content treadmill. Not true. Second myth, I would say, is that like <clears throat> you, ha- you have to be this tech whiz to be able to figure out all the bits and pieces. Here's the irony in all of this. Um, one of our, uh, not one, multiple tribers in our community have done it by just keeping things super simple. So here's a question I'd always encourage people to ask themselves. How can I make this super simple? So here's a great story. So Cheryl Hatch, she was one of those technophobes. She was not comfortable with technology whatsoever, but she didn't let that stop her from launching her membership. She asked herself that question. How could she keep it super simple? So she was familiar with email. So she's just like, well, instead of creating a whole big members area, Why don't I just deliver the content via email every week? And so here's the crazy part, Matt. She did that for two years, two years, and had over 600 paying members before she ever decided to then roll out a members area. And the crazy part is, is she's not alone. Heidi Easley did this exact same thing, almost on the exact same timeline. Two years to just delivering everything via email. Like how simple is that? But it allowed her to get going and to create massive momentum. So you don't have to have the big fancy tech whiz, blah, blah, blah. You can get going in a very simple way if you just shift your mind to keeping it simple. And then the last thing that I would say is that often people get tripped up thinking that they've got to have this audience of tens of thousands or thousands of people before they launch a membership. And you know, Matt, there are so many stories in our community of people who haven't launched with tens of thousands or thousands, just a few hundred people like Wendy Batten. So she launched her membership site 
Um, and she serves paint store retailers. So super tiny niche, but she didn't have a big audience. She had 354 people. And so when she did a founding member launch, she welcomed 52 members generating $2,800 a month in month number one. And now she's since gone on to, you know, welcome hundreds of members. But the point is it created massive momentum from a tiny audience. Anna Saucier, same thing. She didn't have a massive audience, 326 people. And she helps infertility practitioners. And so when she launched, she generated just over $5,000, $5,024 and, uh, from her founding member launch. And it created massive momentum. And we see this happening over and over and over again. People with tiny audiences who are doing founding member launches. And here's the, here's the thing that I want everybody to realize. When you have a small audience, you actually have a unique advantage. Mm -hmm. because you're able to build a more intimate relationship with that audience and therefore your conversion rates are way higher. So you can do things with a smaller audience that you can't do with a big audience. And so it's about leveraging that and using that to your advantage, which is what uh, and why we see such high conversion rates with smaller audiences. So those three things are probably the things that uh, hold people back thinking, one, it's a con you're going to be stuck in a content treadmill. Not true. Two, you got to be this techno whiz to set everything up. Not true. And three, you got to have this massive audience. Not true. And so when you realize that and get out of your own way, you can create massive momentum no matter where you are on your journey. Yeah. <laughs> I already knew everything you were going to say there because I've heard you say it so many times. And like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, I'm, I'm just processing it going, wait a minute, this is what we need to change in our membership. Like, this, it's, I, I just... I just love hearing you talk about membership sites. Um, it's so fun to talk to anyone who's like in their zone of genius. You know, I, know <laughs> you've, I don't know if you've read the book, uh, The Big Leap, mm. uh, Gay Hendricks. Uh, I just finished rereading my highlights from it the other day. And, you know, just like it's so fun to talk to people about that. So one of the questions, I asked my audience to submit some questions. And one of the ones that I got that was like, you just touched on it, but I want to kind of actually ask this differently. One of a lot of people ask the same thing. How do you create that much content for a membership site? But like you just said, that's not what you need. You need, um, you know, you need less content than most people think, but you still have to create some content. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk formats and then content creation. Cause you talked about how you, you and Michael used to do it. Um, I, there's a couple different models. What are typically like the maybe two or three best models of a membership site in terms of uh, frequency of delivery and kind of uh, the, the, the framework for the membership site. Well, and there are many different types of membership models for sure. And a lot of times it, it it's based on the type of business you have. So a product-based business is going to have a different type of membership. That's going to be like, you know, the socks of the month or, you know, the, their um, dollar shave club or mm -hmm. like Sarah Williams, who has a uh, physical subscription box that she sends out to her clients and customers. So that's going to be a different type. You've got the service-based memberships. This would be like our car wash, you know, instead of, you know, going through the car wash one time and the car wash, hoping that people are going to come back, they structured it to uh, have a membership. So my wife and I, we, we both have a membership for each of our cars. We pay every single month and we can go through the car wash an unlimited number of times. But that's an example of how they've taken a service and turned it into a membership. Another good example of that is Mary Claire Fredette in our community. You know, she had a physical brick and mortar uh, massage studio and she launched an online membership. And so there's many ways to take services and turn them into uh, memberships. Then there's a knowledge-based membership. This is where you're sharing your expertise uh, and teaching people how to uh, learn a new skill, as an example. And um, in this case, what we got to realize is that people aren't going to go from not knowing how to play the guitar to being the next Eric Clapton like that. They're not going to go from not knowing how to paint to becoming the next Picasso, or they're not going to go from not knowing anything about martial arts to becoming the next black belt like that. It's a journey. And so once you start wrapping your head around that mastering a skill is a journey, then you start to see things a little bit differently. And so when I am uh, helping people when it comes to knowledge-based memberships, one of the most important fundamental things that I encourage everybody to include is what we call a success path. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it's that journey of taking somebody from you know, the very beginning to the end destination of where they want to get to and, and breaking it down for people into different stages. Because what that does is it helps people get clarity around what they need to focus on right now. So rather than the overwhelm of like, oh my gosh, I got to learn all these things and getting overwhelmed by it and then not doing anything. When you break it down, 
you enable them to focus. And it's like, oh, okay, here I am. I'm at this stage and, and all I got to focus on right now is just doing these few things. And it's like a breath of fresh air. And what happens is more people take more action and more action leads to more progress. And more progress means they're going to stay. Like I've never heard in all of my years of anybody leaving a membership site because they're experiencing too much success. Like I've never heard somebody say, no, you know what? I'm making too much progress here. I'm out. Like they don't say that. So as long as people are making progress along that journey, they are going to stay part of the membership. So the focus for you and I in a knowledge-based membership is to provide people clarity, not load them up with a ton of information, is to provide clarity on what they need to do and what their next step is. And so just a quick rule of thumb, generally I would never recommend more than one primary piece of content per week. And my rule of thumb is you never want to have uh, more than 60 minutes of content per week. In fact, I love to air way less than that, usually like around the 20 to 30 minutes, because it's not just the learning time, but it's the implementation time, right? We want to get people away from just procrastinating on learning more, learning more, learning more. We want to get them towards learning and doing, learning and doing, because by doing, they're going to make that progress. So those are just some rule of thumbs. One primary piece of content per week, never more than 60 minutes. I love to, you know, kind of err on the on the much lighter side, like 20 to 30 minutes. And then that gives people time to implement. And then the last type of membership is typically like a community-based membership. And this is really where you're bringing people together who have a shared interest for more discussions and support for one another. But uh, most most people uh, are creating knowledge-based memberships. And, um, and there are different models within that. But essentially, like I said, the rule of thumb is never more than a 60 minutes of content per week. Yeah, ours and I mean people can vary, but ours for for affiliate insider monthly we do four four month max of two hours and fifteen minutes. We mm. tried two hours, but dang it, I, I'm like I'm so close. But no, I was like, so we set it at two fifteen to give me that little fifteen minute buffer in case I had like an interview go a little long, you know. Um, and we found that's been a really good uh, mix. And I I would never have thought that until mm. we went through Tribe and actually learned from you. I mean, I would have thought. Oh, we got to do this, and we got to do this, and you know, we need like you know eight pieces of content that are all like an hour long, and more is better. And I, I can't even imagine what it, not only for me. I mean, I would be insane at this point. I probably would have canceled it. I don't care how much money I'm making. I probably would have stopped doing it. But I think our members would have just been like, "I'm I'm overwhelmed," because we never hear from people that like you you gave us too little. It's always, hey, I, I missed a couple of weeks. Now I feel like I'm behind. And that's a source of stress for them. So the easiest thing for them to do is just tell their credit card company, don't. Yeah, because when they get overwhelmed, you. they feel like they're paying for something that they're not using, you yeah. know? And and here's an interesting, uh, I was just thinking, I don't, I think it's upstairs actually. Um, I was, I was going to try to find uh, the book where this really sunk home for me. It was a book called Rework by, mm-hmm. um, uh, Jason Friedman and uh, David Hasselheimer. And anyway, long story short, they the way they structured that book was such a blessing because I don't know if you experienced this, Matt, but you know I have you know a stack of books beside the bed, and inevitably what has happened. I, I mean, I shared it earlier. Like I fall asleep really quick, so I go to bed with the intention of reading like uh, you know another chapter. And I'd get a few pages in and then I'd get sleepy and then boom, I'd fall asleep. Yep. And so then the next night I'd be like, oh, what? You know, so I'd have to restart the chapter all over again. <laughs> it was like Groundhog Day, right? I just kept repeating the same chapter. And then I read Rework and they structured things a little bit differently. Whereas most books, chapters are, you know, 20 to 30 pages long. In Rework, a chapter was like a page and a half, two pages, maybe three pages max. Yep. And so I'd get through you know, a chapter. And I was like, oh, wow. Like I, I, Matt, I just banked off a chapter. I'm going to, I'm going to go for another one. And it created this momentum. And before I knew it, I had read like 10, 11, 12 chapters, which would have been a, the equivalent of a regular book. But because I had that feeling of momentum, I felt like a superstar. I'm like, look at me. Like I just, I just crushed 10 chapters. Like I'm the man. But, you like you called a friend, didn't you? And told him, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, but I'm sharing this with you because what, what's important about that? It's about the smaller bite-sized chunks enables people to create momentum for themselves. Mm. And that momentum carries them through the actual, you know, implementing and the challenges and so forth that they may face 
sometimes when they're looking to absorb your information and put it into practice. And so we got to remember that, like the way in which we deliver content is really important. Not only do we want to teach people all the good stuff, but we want to do it in a way that enables them to make progress. If they're making progress and they've got momentum on their side, that's when not only do they win, but you win too. Because then you've got these stories of progress and that's what fuels your future marketing. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's, that is so true. It's all about the results. I mean, really, if I, I want to help them achieve results in seven days. You know, and yes. then they can consume the next day, not just keep piling stuff on them. I think that's the worst thing we can do with membership sites. I want to ask you a couple of things. Uh, one of these I'm actually curious about myself. I haven't, uh, I haven't officially found the best way, but you have more experience in the membership site area. I started last October, so we're still kind of fleshing some stuff out. I want to talk about affiliate stuff, like uh, just a few things related to affiliates in, in terms of membership sites. Um, you uh, in Tribe are, are primarily an advocate that, you know, most of the time, I know there are exceptions like maybe what's going on right now and stuff. Um, you know, you're an advocate for opening and closing the membership. So you bring on mm -hmm. people once, maybe twice a year, depending upon, you know, the niche, of course, there are exceptions to that, but let's just go with twice a year. Yep. So what's the best way to work with affiliates when you're doing that? I mean, does it, does it really just replicate kind of a, a traditional launch model in terms of uh, the affiliates? Yeah, well, listen, uh, let me throw a question back to you. Yeah. So we haven't discussed this ahead of time, but, you know, this will play off your natural instincts. Yeah. If you're an affiliate for a membership site, would you rather be paid one time or every month? That's easy. Right? And so <laughs> every single month. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, this is a rather easy conversation because here's what I want people thinking about. If you want the support of affiliates to promote your membership or your subscription, then reward them for that. Whether you do a launch one time a year or two times a year doesn't matter. But imagine the difference in their support and their psychology. If they know they're going to send you a lead, which is going to turn into a sale, and then they get paid on it every single month thereafter. Now what happens is your membership site actually becomes their membership site because it's a source of recurring revenue for them. Yep. So whether you launch one time a year, two times a year, my recommendation is if you are charging on a monthly recurring basis, pay your affiliates on a monthly recurring basis. We do that. We do it with our searchy, our software, same thing. You know, we have affiliates who have earned a very substantial monthly recurring revenue from sending us traffic one time. But what that does is that also incentivizes them to send traffic on a regular consistent basis. So they build up that recurring revenue in affiliate commissions and our membership essentially becomes their membership. Yeah. And I'll share one tip with everybody. Uh, when you do that every month, when you send them their money, don't just send them the PayPal deposit, actually send a separate email and tell them, hey, we're paying you 400 bucks this month. Wanted to let you know. And, and reminder, our next big launch is coming up on, oh, we'll just go with April 23rd. You know, yeah. since the shirt says that. We'll explain <laughs> this in a moment. Um, so anyway, you know, a big launch is coming up April 23rd. And it's like, it's a great way. Like there's no better time to ask somebody to promote than when you just gave them money. It's a really good point because I remember, you know, my uh, history back in the day was I used to be an affiliate manager. Yeah. You, you know that. And uh, I was at a point when, uh, I was there at a point when, uh, payment started to shift from physical checks being sent to like PayPal and stuff like that. And it was a huge transition because what happened is you lost that physical ability to communicate with people yeah. with like a letter that was included in a check. And it just became easy to just do a mass pay via yeah. PayPal. And there was no personalization to what you're speaking about. And so I can't emphasize that enough. It is super important that you communicate with your affiliates when you are paying them to remind them, hey, remember that was traffic you sent months ago and it's still paying you month and month again. And so really great tip and really great point. You just gave me a really good idea still. I'll share it with you afterwards. <laughs> cool. Um, so what about like, uh, this was a question we got here uh, that I thought was kind of an interesting one. What about promoting affiliate offers inside of membership sites? Uh, is that something that you've seen or maybe like any lessons, mistakes, do's and don'ts there? Like you're talking like the membership site owner promoting a, yeah. you know, other products yeah. within? I'm pretty sure that's what they were asking uh, based on yeah. who, who asked this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see it happen all the time and I think it's, you know, a, a great thing. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you're uh, providing and supporting products that you believe in, like 
you know, this is one of my rule of thumbs. And I don't know what you recommend, Matt, but generally whenever I'm promoting something, it's either something that I have used myself and gained benefit from, or I uh, have, you know, know the person behind the product or service and know that it would benefit my audience in a big way. And so as long as you are coming from a place of service and you're recommending products and services that are going to benefit your members, then by all means. But if you're just, you know, putting whatever products up, uh, you know, and slapping affiliate links on them and there's no meaning or connection uh, or relevance for your audience, then that's going to be a question mark. At the end of the day, as long as you're showing up and serving your members, excuse me, that's the, that's the, uh, ultimately the litmus test and thing to focus on. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? I mean, you've, you've taught, how many people have you taught now? 5,000 plus easy? Uh, no, in the last four years, just with Tribe alone, it's beyond 10,000 10, plus people. Yeah, okay. So from all of those people, maybe it's a, a, somebody that you've consulted in that one day a month or from the 10,000 plus Tribers, what's a, what's a lesson you've learned from one of them about membership sites? Well, um, we kind of already spoke about it a little bit. And that was, uh, I used to have the belief, Matt, that you needed a bigger audience to launch mm-hmm. a membership. And, uh, and this is what I love about the work I get to do is I get my eyes opened up to uh, what's possible. You know, I, I literally earlier today, I, um, I just got off a, uh, a, a, an, another interview with a woman. Her name's Leslie. And she shared with me in the interview. She said, Stu, you know, when I first heard you speak about membership sites, she said, I, I hesitated because I, I didn't have a huge audience. I had uh, an audience of 87 people, 87. And she said, but, you know, I heard the stories that you shared of people who had smaller audiences who did a founding member launch. And she said, I was encouraged and inspired by that. So I decided to go for it. So she did a founding member launch with uh, her audience, her total audience, again, 87 people. She ended up welcoming more than 15 plus people generating a couple thousand dollars. And she said for her, that was just like eye opening, like, Oh my goodness, this is possible. And so that's probably been one of the biggest things that I've learned is That's that awesome. never underestimate people's ability to be able to implement and get results for themselves. And, uh, and so that's been incredibly inspiring. I get inspired by like all the, the different types of markets that are served, like markets I had no idea about. Like, you know, uh, last year there was an amazing story of this woman, her name's Holly, and she launched a membership site in a obscure market she helps balloon artists you know like (laughs) people who create like balloon animals like I didn't even know there was like a community for these these types of people but she launched a membership site and I love the title of it Uh, the name of her membership site is called the twister hood and so I love that Uh, but she ended up welcoming 400 plus members into her membership it's like all of them right yeah I know right I had you you just never know 400 plus members and it generated more than six thousand dollars a month for her in month number one and she said that was life changing for her and her family. Like that doubled her family's income like that. So I just get inspired by, you know, watching people uh, implement and, and I get inspired by them making massive progress. I get inspired by the variety and the, the uniqueness of all the markets that can be served through memberships. And then I get really inspired by like the extended ripple uh, effect. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but I'm reminded of the story of uh, Christy Hawkins. So Christy, she, uh, she teaches people uh, paint, uh, how to paint. And she used to teach these in night classes. And the whole reason she wanted to launch an online membership was she's got three daughters who play competitive volleyball. But she always had to miss their games because they're always in the evenings uh, because she was teaching these painting classes. So she wanted to launch an online membership to give her more time to be with her family. And so she did. And she's had unbelievable success you know, with her painting membership, and it's freed her up to be able to spend more time with her kids, which is awesome. But then she sent me the story of like, there was a one of her members in her membership, uh, took the lesson that Christy was sharing in the membership to an old age home. And she went through the painting lesson with all of the uh, elderly people in the old age home. And she sent Christy this amazing picture of all these uh, old men and women who had gone through the painting lesson and all of their paintings. And you could see like these big smiles on all of these uh, elderly people. And Christy sent this to me. She said, like, she said she was bawling. She said, I, I, I never even thought about like, 
who else this is impacting. And that is like one of the most inspiring things is like, it's not just it benefiting us and our lives, which it does. It's not even just benefiting the people that are in the membership. It's also about the extended ripple. You know what I mean? And oftentimes we lose sight of that, but that's the thing that lights me up is, you know, understanding like this is so much bigger than just recurring revenue for our business. Yes, it provides that. And yes, it creates stability, but it's so much bigger than that. It's like we are impacting so many more people in so many different ways, whether they're, we're helping them with their dog, whether we're helping them with their relationship with their spouse, whether they're, we're helping them learn painting or guitar or whatever it is. And so that for me has been like one of the most rewarding experiences of the work we get to do. Mm, that's powerful. So Here's an interesting question for you. I was thinking through this. Um, so if you could go back in time to, you think you started around your mid to late twenties. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So we'll say 25, 26 year old Stu, you're starting your first uh, membership site. Hmm. What is one thing or uh, let's say, let's say you had like a minute, maybe 90 seconds to tell him everything that you want to tell him. That's just going to save him from all the mistakes that he's going to make. Uh, what would you tell him? I'm going to set a clock for like 90 seconds and you've got 90 seconds and then you just like magically disappear. Uh, what would you tell him in those 90 seconds? One, I'd say, dude, get going way earlier than you think. You know, yeah. you, you don't have to get everything right. You just have to get it going. You know, that was a quote I heard back in 2004 from a friend of mine, Mike Lippman, but it's true then and it's true now. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. We see that time and time again with so many tribers who do founding member launches where they don't even have the membership site created yet, but it's the idea, it's the vision that people buy into and it gives them the momentum to get going. That's number one. Number two is that I would say, look, the first time you put something out, it is not going to be perfect. And in fact, the beauty about a membership site is that you can change it and you should change it because you're going to change it and adapt it around your members needs. So the earlier you get going, the faster you can get toward that quote, perfect membership. But if you try to plan that perfect membership, uh, you're never going to be able to because it's always going to change based on your members needs. So the earlier you get going, uh, the better. And then the third thing that I would say is like, keep it simple. So often we get into our heads and we overcomplicate things. And I want to remind people back to the Cheryl Hatch story of keeping it super simple. She didn't get swallowed up in all the tech She didn't get swallowed up in all the bells and whistles. At the end of the day, she delivered the deliverables via email and it allowed her to get going two plus years, more than 600 paying members before she ever thought about a members area. And so I often think like where else in our lives do we overcomplicate things that slow us down and prevent us from ever getting going? What if we just stripped it down to its bare minimum and focused on just executing on those things first, keeping it super simple? That would allow us to do more faster. We'd learn more. We'd make more progress. We'd have more momentum on our side and all of which is going to snowball and, and uh, really build because that's what memberships do. It's like the compounding effect, you know, that we start small, but each month it grows and grows and grows. Unlike a traditional business where you each month you're starting from zero and you have to go and find new sales every month. Membership's totally different. So the sooner you get going, the better, keep it simple and, uh, and realize that you don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. I love it, my man. I just, I don't know why it just registered with me when you talked about just doing the email thing instead of having the membership site. I mean, you and I are old enough to remember that's just called a newsletter. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, how many paid newsletters did we subscribe to back in like 2005? Uh, I mean, that was like, we didn't have a membership site. It was just, you know, Perry and the other guys were just sending us emails. So, Sue, so before my, my last couple of questions here, and I want to, again, I want to respect your time. I just want to acknowledge you for your enthusiasm, for mm-hmm. your joy, uh, obviously for the wisdom and for being so willing to, to share so openly today. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so real quick, the elephant in the room, what the heck is up with April 23rd, dude? <laughs> Well, I might April wearing 20- a t-shirt with a date on it. Yeah, it's a great t-shirt and I appreciate you wearing it. Um, April 23rd is the date when I'm going to be delivering a free live workshop. So every year, once a year, uh, I share these practices and principles in a uh, free workshop. And this year I'm teaching it live, which I'm super excited about. And the reason is because so obviously so much is changing right now. Like so much is up in the air, but there's an other side to this story. And that is that 
memberships right now are booming. Like whether it's in the guitar market, Levi Kajula, you know, he recently came to me and, and admitted that he was a little bit nervous to look at his stats because he said, I don't know, like if people are going to be canceling during this time. But Ali, his community manager, came to him and said, uh, Levi, we just crossed a major milestone. They had just crossed 7,000 members in their membership teaching people how to play the guitar. He's like, what? So he goes and looks at his stats. And during this time, sales have been tripling. Because why? People are at home. Yeah. They, there's never been a time when more people are at home spending more time uh, online than ever before than right now. And so yeah. it is an amazing time. Whether it's Levi in the guitar market or Emily Jeffords just two weeks ago closed her uh, membership for artists. Welcome 367 new members. Or Tamara Bennett, who's in a really niche market. She teaches people how to paint decorative door hangers. She just closed her launch, welcomed 420 new members, bringing her membership total up to 1,127 new members. Or there's Leland, who just closed her membership, teaching people weight loss. She just welcomed another 187 members. I'm sharing this with you because right now, memberships are booming. And in fact, there was a research study that was just released this week where they surveyed 2,000 people who had been quarantined, asking them what they plan to do with this time. And the, the results of this study were fascinating. 69% of the people said that they plan to um, learn a new skill during this quarantine, whether it be painting, whether it be writing, whether it be coding, whether it be gardening, whatever it is, they want to come away a better human being. They want to use this time. 57% of them said that they want to use the time to pursue things that they've always wanted to do, but never had time to do. And so I'm sharing this with you because we're seeing a correlation between the study that was released and what is actually happening in our tribe community with these memberships that are booming. That's number one. Number two is that people are craving connection right now. They can't get it in the traditional formats, like through church or schools or sports teams or pubs or clubs or wherever you get the connection. And so memberships are perfectly suited to create that connection for people. And then number three is that there's been a whole lot of new problems that have emerged during this thing that are waiting, begging for entrepreneurs like you and I to come in with solutions. Case in point, you know, we've got many tribers in our community who are teachers and they have membership sites that serve and provide lesson plans for other teachers. People like Anna DeGilio, who provide reading and writing lesson plans for other teachers. Or Patty Palmer, who provide art lesson plans for other teachers. Well, they recognize like there's millions of parents right now who are at home not knowing what to do with their parents or what to do with their kids. And so what's happened is those teachers have made a slight pivot providing those lesson plans now for uh, parents. And so there's new problems that have emerged that are waiting for people to just make that pivot. So in the first part of the live training, what we're going to talk about is how to know whether a membership is right for your market. And more specifically, what type of membership site would be right for you and your market. So that's the first part of the training. The second part of the training, we basically pull back the curtain and we uh, reveal what you should provide in your membership. So we touched on it a little bit in terms of structure. We're gonna go deeper in terms of how do you set up that success path and what specifically should you be providing along the way inside of your membership so that your members make massive progress and they stay month after month after month. And so we'll talk about how to structure the content. And then in the third part, we zoom up and we talk about the five key areas of a successful membership, starting with your foundation strategy, then your content strategy, then your marketing strategy, then your retention strategy, and then your growth strategy. And these are the five components that drive the success of any membership. And we're going to unpack them all. In fact, I'm going to give you this amazing uh, PDF blueprint. It's a mind map that goes into detail of all of those. So we've had people who have literally taken that and launched their memberships off the back of that free training. Like Fembi, yeah. who was over in Africa, she launched a membership site based on that free training. Julie, who I just heard from a couple of weeks ago, she said she launched a membership off the back of that free training. Welcome 360 something new members. And so I'm sharing this with you because the training is amazing. We do it one time a year and it all starts April 23rd. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, Stu. So uh, I cannot wait because you're doing this live. I'm going to be on, guys. So we'll put a link in uh, below wherever you're watching or listening to this. 
And uh, I, I just, I can't wait. So I'll be in the comments, probably making, you know, pithy comments and making fun of whatever you're doing. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I just, I can't wait, guys. So join me, join Stu, learn how to get your membership site up and running. Stu, thank you so much for your time today, man. This has been amazing. I've got a million more questions for you that we'll just have to ask another time. So I'll have to have you back. Yeah. And speaking of that, like, just know that like, with the free workshop, I'm going to be available. So we teach yep. one day. And then the very next day I go live and I answer the questions that are coming up. So if you've got questions, I just want to encourage everybody, write them down. I'm going to be making myself available to answer as many as I possibly can. And and Matt, I I certainly want to encourage you, if you get questions from your audience specifically, like, you know, ping me directly and we'll make sure we get those answered. Will do, buddy. Thank you so much, bud. All right. Cheers. Take care. So I'd been sharing when, when we recorded this interview, I'd been sharing just how, like on all over social media, how excited I was about this episode. And you can see why. I was excited to share this episode. Stu is amazing. The content was amazing. Uh, His message is amazing. His enthusiasm is off the hook. And uh, that's just who Stu is. And so I I just, I want you to get into his workshop. I want you to experience, like, get more of Stu. Get the full Stu experience. Just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash tribe. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash tribe. We'll put that link here in the show notes as well. So you can grab that. Um, and also claim your $1 trial on our membership program, Affiliate Insider Monthly at MattMcWilliams.com forward slash aim trial. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash AIM trial. And lastly, if you know someone who wants or needs a membership program, tell them about this episode so they can get this content, so they can learn more about how to start their membership site. Share it. Tell me when you share it on social media. Tag me on Facebook or Twitter. Let me know. Love to give you a shout out on a future episode. Uh, So again, make sure you get in in Stu's Tribe Workshop and uh, make sure you check out that, that $1 trial on AIM and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast. 